Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to do a quick review of all of the math that you will need to know for your APES course this year. I'm going to do more detailed videos on each of these topics, but this is really just going to be a high level, hey, this is what you're going to need to know to be successful. Okay, first thing you need to know is scientific notation. You are going to know how to convert into scientific notation, and you are going to have to know how to get out of scientific notation. So you can see I just have two quick examples here that you can review. And again, I'll do a longer video on this topic. One other really quick housekeeping item. If you're new here, this entire APES math success sheet is available on Patreon for purchase and the link is in the description box below. Okay, moving on. Here we have two more examples of how to expand from scientific notation. And then next thing you're gonna to have to know is how to multiply and divide with scientific notation. So you can see I also have some examples here. Next thing you'll need to know is percent increase and decrease. You can see the formula here. For percent increase, you're gonna do the new value minus the original divided by the original and then just multiply by 100%. And then for the percent decrease, you just do it's kind of just flipped around. You do the original minus new divided by the original and then times 100%. All right, moving on. Next thing you will have to master is dimensional analysis, which is really just a fancy name for unit conversions. I cannot stress how important this topic is and how much it will help you, not only in this course, but within a lot of your other science courses. Um, you can see some examples here. Uh, basically, it's just converting from one unit to the other and understanding how to set this up. So as a quick example, we could just talk about this one, convert 1.5 years to seconds. How do you do that? Okay, well, you start with years, you're given, right? And then every time you have to be sure that your units cancel out diagonally. So like here I could cancel years, then I cancel days, then I cancel hours. And then I always like to circle this last unit to make sure that I'm in the correct unit. And then basically every number that's on top, I multiply and then any numbers on bottom are being divided. Okay, moving on. You will need to know metric units. I've listed here just some common ones that you should familiarize yourself with. For length, you definitely need to know meter. That's your, your base unit. Mass is the gram. Volume is liters. And then you'll need to know these various areas. So hectares, those are particularly important and common for this course. And then for energy, you'll need to know the kilowatt hour. That one's pretty common as well. Okay, moving on. Next thing you will need to know is metric conversions. So you can see over here on the left, these are all of your metric prefixes. Here we have the exponential form. So it tells you it's 10 to the power of what? This is the expanded form. So as an example, this just shows you the expanded form of 10 to the 12th. And then over here, I let you know what you have to multiply by to get back to the base unit which will kind of make more sense in later videos when we go over examples. Okay, so this would just be a really quick example of dimensional analysis with metric conversions. If you wanted to convert 2.5 kilograms to decagrams, you would again start with your given. You have to make sure your units are going to cancel. So in one kilogram, there's a thousand grams. And then here again, my units cancel. And then in 10 grams is one decagram. So then again, I would just multiply all my numbers on top and divide by my numbers on bottom. I also like to just cancel out my zeros. So like here, I would actually just cancel one of those zeros out. 2.5 times 100 gives me 250. Okay, good. Moving on. Metric conversions with area and volume. So basically what you have to know here, you really need to master metric conversions first before you try to tackle area and volume. But basically all you're doing is you're basically setting it up. Like if this was just kilometers and you were just converting to meters, it's one in one kilometer, there's a thousand meters, right? Um, however, we have square kilometers. So what we have to do is we have to actually take our conversion factor and we have to square it. So it's not that much more difficult, but this is just a very important step that you can't forget. So you can't directly just convert kilometers squared. 
you really need to start with your base unit and then square it. I guess you could, it's just not common and I think it gets way more complicated, so I don't recommend it. All right, same thing with volume. Volume units are always gonna be cubed, right? So we have kilometers cubed here. And then when you look at it, we use the same conversion factor, which is one kilometer is a thousand meters, but now we're cubing it. So that is pretty much it. And then at the end, I just kind of wanted to highlight some common apes units that you should start to familiarize yourself with, which is the hectare, which is a unit for area, the kilowatt hour, which is a unit for energy, and finally the cubic meter, which is a unit for volume. Thanks so much for watching. Again, this entire review sheet is available for purchase on my Patreon, and I will see you again soon.